Welcome back everyone to Get Real. Time now to get some context into the conversation we are having tonight. The special with regard to the rising of uh, is, uh, religious uh, extremism in the region, especially in South Asia. We've seen uh, uh, events that's occur that, that has occurred here in Sri Lanka. Now the very recent uh, incident in Pakistan um, based on religion and still people acting as if they are in the 19th century or also, but how can we understand what, what's happening right now and what exactly needs to be done? Because talking about this, understanding it is vital. Mm, joining me tonight uh, to discuss this is the former foreign minister, Rohit Bogalagama, um, who, who has been uh, on this program several times. Welcome back, sir. Good to see you. Um, and also uh, the rector of the Shuripali campus at the University of Colombo, Dr. Prithiba Mahana Mahiva. Welcome back again, sir. Uh, good to see you, gentlemen. Um, let me start off with you, uh, Foreign Minister. Um, you know, there have been many instances of diplomatic debacles at the time you were, you were uh, there. And, and uh, dealing with it is quite crucial. Uh, what do you think? What, what happened in Pakistan? Uh, do you think... Uh, we've seen the Prime Minister of Pakistan uh, reacting very swiftly, taking action. We've seen all that. But does that address the root cause of this issue? So I think, uh, give me a moment to convey my deepest sympathies and condolences to the family of late Mr. Devadnam. The subject matter of today's discussion, I think, is a grieving family, a grieving nation that we are representing today, being Sri Lankans, one who was employed in a foreign soil. I think the right to life must get respected universally. From that premise, if you are to look at how uh, this very unfortunate, most tragic, brutal incident occurred. I think uh, going by the media information that we are receiving, we still haven't got the official version in terms of other than uh, what has been stated initially. Investigations are currently on. In my uh, opinion, we have to uh, await a full investigation to the matter which is expected by the government of Sri Lanka. They have the right to seek uh, from a friendly nation like that of Pakistan. We have had similar occurrences in the past, mm. including when our cricket team got yes. attacked. That's also in, in the Pakistan. year 2000 uh, in Lahore, in the same province, yeah. in the city of Lahore, the national team got attacked in 2008 time. Uh, uh, during my uh, time as foreign minister, I was on a state visit with the uh, President uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa uh, in uh, Nepal. I took a flight immediately right out into Pakistan from Nepal in order to express our concerns and as to know how these things get triggered in a foreign soil. And the attributes were that there was a terrorist attack and from which source the terrorism developed to target the Sri Lankan team was of much interest to us as a country. And the Pakistani president, along with the cabinet, issued us a full investigation. And we were happy to register a mark of uh, concern with a friendly nation and expecting an independent inquiry. Similarly, from our diplomatic channels, though it's an individual that has been uh, targeted and sacrificed in the most uh, gruesome manner, I think it's the right of our government to seek a full investigation. Along with that, even to post some of our keen, uh, our experienced investigators to be present in the process. Because as I get, whether there are certain political issues now developing, as to how this mob got mobilized. Was it purely on the uh, premise of uh, a poster that has been removed. Yeah. What did this poster involve? Was it a poster depicting something uh, religious only? Was it political connected, this particular uh, item that got displayed? Or was it something more than that? As to how was the mobilization of a large group? Was it, is there another political movement developing in Pakistan in this particular location? I, uh, outside that of the government, uh, political uh, strength of the government of uh, uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan. So these are factors uh, we have to now go into it much deeply. So I think uh, at the outset in this discussion, thank you, 
uh, that we'll like, I like to uh, encourage uh, the focus in, in terms of how best we can seek justice and universal play, both to the victim, Indeed. but to prevent this type of occurrences coming to our people going abroad and working. Exactly. In uh, foreign locations, they believe and they have a reasonable expectation to be abroad, to work, and believe in that, we are working in a civilized world. And the government encourages people to go and seek employment overseas. That is why the Foreign Employment Bureau and the, has stepped in immediately to compensate in whatever manner they thought is fitting. But believe in that. It is our responsibility to take charge of our subjects when they are abroad. That is our utmost duty to stand by our people. I want to, uh, Foreign Minister, I want to get uh, in, into that particular, uh, what actually did the Foreign Service did and what have they done uh, enough in order to make sure that Sri Lankans in these particular uh, volatile areas are safeguarded. Uh, before that, uh, Dr. Prathiba Mahanameva, I want to get your take on this as well. Uh, a Sri Lankan, a Buddhist, uh, a person who has absolutely no uh, bearings towards the faith of Islam goes into a country like this and uh, yes, we are told we need to respect. But there was no disrespect that has occurred. The, the official story that goes on is saying that he tore a poster uh, which contained a, a wording from the Quran. But then there is this other side uh, of the story where saying uh, an employee of that particular factory was uh, not okay with the person and he used this particular incident in order to get what he wanted. Uh, is doing something like that, knowingly or unknowingly, uh, is death should be the punishment? Because I know you have worked very hard in terms of, uh, you know, safeguarding human rights of people, uh, uh, being an activist on, on that front. Do you think uh, the crime uh, matches uh, the result? Uh, thank you for the invitation. This is called blasphemy. That is where Holy Al-Quran, even I have studied uh, Islamic religion in Vellavatta, Center for the Study of Islamic Studies. Two years I followed the course, very disciplined, nothing like that. So as a person who had studied, referred Holy Al-Quran, I have never seen a thing like this. So today is December 10th, the most important day to protect, promote, respect human rights. Now I cannot forget, I was in Geneva 2014. There was a resolution against Sri Lanka about to pass. The one and only country, Pakistan, stood up. Not to pass any resolution against Sri Lanka, please postpone. That was the voice of Pakistan at that time. So I cannot believe a thing like this incident happened to a Sri Lankan nationalist. I like to say a word, Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Imran Khan said, there will be no mercy to the mob which lynched Sri Lankan national. So the voice is very clear. But when I did a research, I found hardline TPL. This was uh, banned by the Pakistani mm. government. This is a hardline Islamic party. TPL, that is Teharik E. Uh, Lebiak. Lebiak. That is the organization which connected to politics. Mm. This is my argument. Even Sri Lanka Honorable Minister knows not to register any political party which connected to religion, which speak to blood. So the first thing the Prime Minister must take, not to register any political parties. This Prime Minister is the person who actually unbanned this organization. That's right. Uh, he, it was banned, but when he came to power, he's the one who did it. Issue the politics, popular politics. They are very famous. This is where I call religious education and extremism in Pakistan. Even when you come to power, you have to remain in power. To remain in power, certain things you have to do it. Later I'll explain how madrasa schools mm -hmm. are doing it. But as a starting point, my argument is this. Islamic religion is not connected to any type of indiscipline, violence, public actions. But there are certain groups which have developed fundamentalist extremism. They call it revolutionary. And therefore they go with the word called fantasism militancy. And which is connected to terrorism also. Mm. Now, 
These are the root causes, as Honorable Minister says, I agree. Way forward. We are not only this, not only Pakistan, all SARC countries, foreign ministers and former ministers must get together and discuss this. Come up with a convention which can ban terrorism. This is where we have to start. Give me one minute. What happened to now in Afghanistan? Afghanistan Human Rights Commission was a great commission those days. But today you can't find that. When Taliban grabbed the power, there is no freedom of education. What they stop? All the females from tomorrow, no school. So they want to keep this in a, you know, uh, under their male domination. So all these things will go to once again popping up the terrorism. So the story is not for the Sri Lanka. There were series of events, but it didn't go to media. Why? They are all Pakistan nationalists. Immediately after the incident, NGOs came up and they started their voice. And they condemn this brutal attack, even Sri Lanka. And they are ready to pay compensation. Compensation is not the answer. You have to see very, very clearly the root causes for this. This is my argument. Mm. Protecting, respecting that person who tried to save the life was given a certificate. Na that's not enough, Prime Minister. Mm. You have to do a lot. You have to start from the grassroots level. This is where not all Islamic, you know, people like that. But there are certain groups. But, the, but what they do, it's very easy to brainwash if you are not educated. That's why Taliban now doing. Yes. They are not giving the education. Uh, Minister, uh, the problem goes in, I mean, it comes down, trickles down to this simple fact. Education, like what uh, Dr. Mahana Maheva said, uh, he has studied uh, Islam and he says there's nothing of that sort where if by any chance if somebody has to a post uh, unknowingly, a person who's not uh, following that particular faith, you do not put him on the ground and start stomp stomping on him and killing him uh, him. And that is exactly <laughs> what we saw. And the other, uh, the, 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 uh, the demise of humanity is people gathered around him and they were taking pictures, they were taking videos, nobody was helping him. Um, now these issues, you, you've been in the political circles, you've gone through all that, you've you had the, 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 the uh, uncomfortable conversations with, with regard to religion, with regard to terrorism and all that. What is your opinion in terms of how can we get this problem? Because Sri Lanka, this is the second time we are talking. Uh, I mean, if, if we take the, the attack of the cricket, uh, cricket uh, team, well, this is the third time. We had uh, 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 Islamic fan fanatic um, Saharan carried out uh, an attack on Sri Lankan soil. We, we see all this. How do you think we should address this? Yeah, basically, uh, if we study uh, leaving aside the root causes is further and further deep into the discussion that the root causes, if you have to go and analyze as uh, Professor went on to mention, but looking at the incident itself. Now, is there a system failure in Pakistan? Mm -hmm. Pakistan is known to have a very strong police and military presence in its governance. It's part of governance. Now, this is what Dr. Krad Alamin now this location is not the remotest of Pakistani locations. It is one of the most developed highway connectivity is in the Punjab state, not too far from, too far from the Punjab state capital itself. And there it's only 100 kilometer highway expressway connectivity. And one of the most developed and scenic locations in, this, in the entire Pakistan. And it is just on the other side is India. Mm -hmm. Just at the border. So it's a very highly civilized uh, with a long history. If you Google, you see the beauty of that location. And it's an industrialization location. So that means you are, they are used to foreign presence in that locality. Both the managerial level, the, 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 the executive level, then comes to the, uh, the investor level, etc. They are promoting this. Way. Recently only they opened one of the best uh, regional airports in this particular city. Now, what were the police doing? When this mob attack came, when it became public drama, where are the law enforcement on? Have the police, uh, the Pakistani authorities have started dealing with the local DIGs, 
the district uh, chief police officers for this incident. Now the right to life is guaranteed even in terms of the Pakistani constitution. The process of law should take its course in dealing with any perpetration or wrongdoing, whether it is uh, religious contention, uh, whether it is to deal with uh, any other manner in which your insults are taking place uh, to the faith that you believe in, there's a process that can be dealt. Punishment should come only at the end of it. That's what the uh, Pakistan law provides for. Pakistan is a very uh, civilized country in our recognition of Pakistan because we are also in the same club of the SAC, as Dr. Mana went on to say, and part of the Commonwealth. And when Commonwealth was trying to be very difficult with Pakistan and trying to evict Pakistan from its membership, we stood firmly behind Pakistan, solely. Though at that time the suspension still came. That is because of friendship. Why do we respect Pakistan? Because we believe in Pakistan. But now what did the law and the law enforcement arm fail in this particular situation, incident is concerned? How are they going to protect the foreigners who are going to travel into that country? In the event, this poster is very vital in this. Was it a religious poster or is it connected with this particular political party? Tariq uh, Labba in uh, Pakistan. That is an association to promote is a religious uh, mm. type of connotation of Pakistan. It, but extremism is there. So it is now getting built up within the Pakistani soil, even against the uh, party or that of uh, the Prime Minister Imran Khan. Now, Imran Khan, being the Prime Minister himself, great sportsperson, uh, Oxford graduate, uh, even married formally to the Britishers, etc. But that shows how liberal he is. But in spite of that, where did the law enforcement arm take its place in this particular incident? That is something that we need to ask from the Pakistani authorities. We have the right to seek that. In the event, mobs coming out yes. and brutally killing people in the pretext of whatever the connotations they believe in, and if it is extremism that they are talking about, what extremism is permitted in the framework of a constitution of a civilized country. Extremism is a belief, okay. And, but actions cannot be tolerated. Your beliefs can have in uh, various practices, but not to harm anybody else. Right so, to life is a universally declared uh, uh, right of people. Everyone is concerned. Doctor, uh, before we go in for a break, there is this battle between the, between the law of a country and, and, and religion. Uh, religion is trying to creep into the political system or the law system or law is trying to push it away. Now we see that happening in Pakistan with, the, with regard to this incident. Now who trumps whom? Because uh, the supreme authority should be in that particular moment the law of the land. Everybody is, is entitled to follow that. But then these fanatics comes in and say, no, no, it is God. Now, where is the, the line drawn? Because, you know, this person has nothing to do with, with that entire country's political system or, or, or their, their fights. So where should the line be drawn? Yeah, now, General Sia ul -Haq, when he got the power, thereafter, the country changed. They made state religion as Islam. And thereafter, when others came to power, even Benazir, Honorable mm. Benazir Bhutto, they, they try to liberalize. And also, as Minister said, same thing. But the issue is not that. Because this teaching system, there are religious schools. Whatever they feed, you must have a blind worship. Mm. Even no one is going to criticize that. So they start with their teaching, Criticism, the God, punishment is the death. Now, how can you tell that religion is an absolute human rights in even Sri Lanka, chapter 3, article 10? It's very clearly seen. But that is where the religion we see, all these are, even in moderate time, not this extremism. So, therefore, what they try to do, this absolute right to religion, 
overtaken by the leaders tpa leaders so whatever they say you must follow the order given you cannot criticize or question that system must change not in pakistan even in sri lanka you have seen certain extremism groups and also we are the law now even this tpl supporters or even these workers were bodily doing this harm that is also against i have seen in uh, video mm. footage that is we are policemen they don't take any action mm -hmm. any action even same thing happened in sri lanka 1983 when the riots came police never took action finally what happened to us so the same question they have to face in united nation human rights council february march 2022 session so therefore now even must come for action the action as honorable minister say this is a well civilized uh, area now so it's unbelievable this is metropolitan Quite. if it is in another remote area i can believe this but that means even with the civilized people there is no one try to go against that is where they are keeping in under pressure even this poster let's see there was a statement because i heard that foreign investor so someone is going to visit but they want to stop that and even that area they are may have employee employee issues that is a different one mm. to handle there is a labor tribunal in pakistan as well as pakistan they have the human rights commission all these things are there because it's a big yeah, city yeah, yeah. but now the investigations 112 members were arrested of this uh, unmobilized right and the other one six people arrested and the video audio evidence is very clear we right. we did this so the confession is there even confession given you can't so it has to be their legal system you have to put the charges and they are mm. after independent judge uh, uh, you must go with the case so this is a good eye opener for pakistan i am telling on this human rights day minister Let's take a short commercial break. Uh, uh, I'm in conversation with former Foreign Minister uh, Rohit Bhogalagama and also the Director of the Shri Pali Campus of the University of Colombo, Dr. Pratibha Mahana Mehewa. We're talking about the incident that occurred in Pakistan, the aftermath of it. Um, Priyanth Kumar, uh, who was laid to rest on Wednesday, and his family is still trying to figure out what exactly happened. Sri Lanka as a nation needs to face this. Uh, we need to address this. We need to understand what's going on. and also as a region collectively come together because this is a this is a menace for our society south asia is grappling with these religious extremism and that has become a problem let's take a short commercial break you're watching this special report on get we'll be back to the special presentation of Get Real uh religious extremism in South Asia trying to understand what's going on I have a uh, very uh, guest two guests who have absolutely dealt with this issue um, Dr Pratibha Mahana Mehewa the rector of uh, the Shri Pali campus of the University of Colombo and also our former foreign minister um, Mr Rohit Bogalagama uh, we've been talking about uh, understanding what exactly happened in Pakistan and trying to figure out how how what the future is going to look like and and what kind of things might trickle in to sri lanka um i want to start off with uh, dr mara mehewa uh the wife is here in sri lanka she's she's in pain those two children i i'm i i'm i'm sure you've seen the videos yeah. the younger one still does not understand he's smiling and and that innocence is still there so he does not understand maybe he grows up one day he wants justice for his father So this is this has occurred in some other foreign country based on another foreign religion and all that how can we get justice for priyanka because this needs to go through the diplomatic channels the government needs to keep pushing what is the what is the process what do you think uh, should there be a movement that that needs to come into uh, this or or you very well know in south asia the hype will be there for about a week mm. maybe maximum 2 
then it's gone off from the main news. Then what's going to happen to that family? Now, Sri Lanka is represented by Honorable Ambassador. Ambassador representing Sri Lanka, he look all this interest. Now, the first thing, this is a criminal action. In a criminal action, we have to go with the legal system. As Honorable Minister say, start the investigation. Now, already investigation started. But still remember, they are suspects. Presumption of innocent. So therefore, we can't blame them at once. So now the legal process started already. So police and then judicial medical officer and all the other evidence, audio, video, graphic, computer, eyewitnesses, the statement taken. Thereafter, now the process is starting. So the process starts with the lowest level non-summary inquiries going on and they see how much evidence they have thereafter file given to Honorable Attorney General and indict. So once indicted, thereafter the case going on, even defense counsels are there. But the legal system is not much like the West. That is the issue. So we have to always see the language as well as how the movement is going on. Anyway, Let's see a verdict given. Two type of verdicts. Number one, where I have seen the death penalty for killing this. Number two, compensation. Now already compensation paid and the uh, industry, sorry, the garment factory, they say monthly salary pay. So therefore, we can see some type of justice. Compensation happened. was paid by the Sri Lankan government. Yes. Not, not all, from the, uh, uh, but they are also now are, making yeah. a certain type of... That arrangement. is, I think, uh, they, they are collectively the people in Sialkot yes. is uh, trying to That's do that, right. but not, not a government okay. official. Yes. Now, place. the issue, this is the legal system. But let's see now, the whole world criticizing, condemn this act. European Union, West and we. But still, the TPL is more powerful. So now they think we are recognized like ISIS. So this is a threat, challenge to Prime Minister Imran Khan. Now he must see in future popular politics or discipline Pakistan. Foreign Minister, uh, 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 Dr. Pratibha Mahanama has said the person who is representing Sri Lanka in Pakistan is the High Commissioner. High Commissioner uh, goes into the media of Pakistan and, and, and he makes a statement as such saying he thanks the Pakistani people and the government for condoning the gruesome murder of Priyanka Kumar. There is no, no, no mention of, 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 our, of our displeasure, no mention of our anger, there is no mention of anything of that sort. And, and the article, came, uh, this is reported in, in, in one of the Pakistani newspapers. And the article continues to say, you know, the uh, Sialkot incident is tragic and Pakistan government has helped um, uh, the country. And uh, they say that, the, the, the headline says... Sialkot incident will not affect ties with Pakistan. Why are we talking about ties of two nations when people here are angry because this happened to a person of our origin and he was he was brutally murdered. This was not an accidental murder or anything of that. It was brutally. Video evidence is there. Why is our representative, uh, um, uh, High Commissioner um, Vice Admiral Mohan Vijayvikrama, is saying this nonsense instead of actually holding, I mean, if, if there were credible action done by the Pakistani government, except the statements or any, anything, then we can actually say, yes, this is happening. But we need to tell them, we're watching, but this doesn't communicate that. This says, okay, fine, we understand it's a, it's a mistake, it's okay. I think uh, how uh, you have lived the statement coming from our representative, the envoy in Pakistan, uh, is rather in a very uh, light manner an expression uh, falling short of the country's concerns yeah. not getting reflected in that expression. I think it's, uh, in my opinion, and being the foreign minister of this country and we have met uh, several issues like this in the past, first uh, step should be to engage at the level of the Prime Minister of Pakistan and that of our foreign minister in Sri Lanka, expressing the concerns on the failure of the Pakistan law enforcement authorities to prevent this occurrence yeah. when it is happening on the streets of a large city, on an industrial city, where our Sri Lankan worker or the employee 
is being brutally murdered in broad streets? daylight on the street. And it went on for a while, this episode. No one stepped in. Where did the law enforcement uh, arm fail here? Now, that's something that the first step should be to have a bilateral with the Pakistan Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister and the Interior Minister and get their system failure that has affected and that has victimized uh, Sri Lanka. And our faith in the system is getting dented because we have so many others working in Pakistan. Yes. So that is an area that we are, as a country, make use of this occasion, we have to step into. Next time another person can help. Mm. And they might victimize the countries like Sri Lanka because we don't have the, we have the Buddhists going there, we have the Hindus mm. going there. Maybe the Indians also may get victimized because they, are, they may target the ones who are not culturally adaptable to them. So it's a fear that as a nation, as a country, we must communicate to the authority. They'll be very well receptive if we express ourselves properly and in the most serious manner. Why I say we need an involvement with the investigation as well. That is how countries work. When, if they, when there's an American get uh, mm. targeted in Sri Lanka, uh, they will always send a special representative in order to see into the investigation to what degree the, that life is getting uh, safeguarded in terms of respect to his right to live. That is getting eroded. If we just say, okay, let any investigation come out and let the process take its course, then where are our people going to be safeguarded in terms of the constitutional right that we have parted on them in terms of our constitution that they have a right to life? So therefore, that is why we have a consular service. We next day. Even a person committing a crime in a foreign soil is a responsibility of the foreign ministry to safeguard his interests till such time he is judged in the process of uh, due process of the law in that given country. Several times I have stepped in to seek uh, commuting of sentences, death sentences in the Middle Eastern yes. countries to the Sri Lankans who have got into the process in which they have been uh, past the death sentence because we don't believe in the death sentence in Sri Lanka. So we think that they have a right to life irrespective of the crime but the degree of crime. Maybe those countries have their sovereignty in terms of how they deal with uh, certain punishments but still we have to step into this picture. So I think the government of Sri Lanka right now must uh, meet up with the highest level of the Pakistani authorities immediately and be part of this process because it will help including the Prime Minister's government of uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan's government. Because he's getting threatened by this new element. Mm. The fundamentalist Islam, uh, element that is getting into the political makeup of Pakistan. Once it starts spreading its winds, the countries in the region will get threatened thereafter. That is extremism getting built up through political processes. And that is very easy to spread the elements of faith, canvas on it bring the religious connotations, work in terms of extremist beliefs, and no debate is available within certain frameworks of certain religions, and thereby you dictate it to the people, and people will have to swallow it. And this type of terrorist attacks, this type of threatening processes, this type of humiliation given to, the, given to an individual in broad daylight, when the official's arm is just observing, just witnessing it without doing any action will only encourage the process. So I think as a law-abiding society, Sri Lankans, we have to see that that stops there. And we also have to share our own strengths uh, with our friendly country, uh, with that of Pakistan. And these as a Sark fraternity, as uh, Dr. went on to mention at the beginning, uh, our foreign ministers should advise themselves. Uh, both in uh, Sri Lanka and also in the, uh, the context of the SAC countries. There are eight countries in the SAC uh, community. And thereby, take this matter forward. And that will help even religious extremism getting built up in Sri Lanka. Whatever religion they may be belonging to, why should we permit religious yes. connotations to be part of the process of governance in this country in terms of extremism? In terms of extremism. So that is something we have to put a stop out of this very sad experience we now we are going to In, share here. Indeed, uh, uh, Foreign Minister, Dr. Uh, Mahana Mehra, I think 
we've seen in, in Taliban, uh, the, uh, sorry, in Afghanistan, the Taliban coming back to power after, after 20 years or so. Um, Americans came and they pretty much, you know, built the country and gave it back to Taliban and then they left. <laughs> That's what they did uh, after 20 years. Um, now, now, we see that, I mean, we've also seen uh, Osama bin Laden nicely taking shelter in Pakistan, uh, whereas Americans were pouring billions of dollars in order to develop Pakistan. So you have that entire terrorism cell and, and the, the allegiance towards terrorism occurring in that region. Do we see a new threat uh, uh, emerging from that region? And how do we, uh, what, do, what is your opinion? Because on the other side, in, in India, we see other types of like Wahhabism is spreading. Mm. Uh, there is a problem in, in terms of uh, understanding that particular uh, religion aspect of things. And it is also trying to uh, radicalize certain areas of communities in, in India. We also have seen a little bit of, uh, of that uh, extremism occurring here. Now, these little things, uh, if you say, uh, look at Myanmar, the same thing, uh, Bangladesh, another thing. It's rising now. And what is what exactly is your opinion? What's going on here? What do you see? Uh, you know, analyzing all these trends. Mahesh, now this is a great challenge, threat to the freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of thought, as well as right to life. Now all these things covered by this extremism. And they teach the religion. So you have to carefully monitor Madrasa schools. How it is connected to the military training and all. Now Sri Lanka forces are going to uh, Defence College uh, Pakistan. They give the military training for our army also. So that's a very highly recognised. But on the other hand, now what will happen? I was not much aware about the TPL. Now this organisation is a political party. Find out who fund for them, mm. internally as externally. Now, Taliban welcome this group because they are now connected, get the power, grab the power. That is where, because not like uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, most of the time these uh, high society, very reputed families, they are, you know, siblings, sons and daughters, they are in the army. That is a thing where if you study uh, Pakistan very carefully, not like Myanmar role. Now, finally, there won't be any choice for Honorable Prime Minister to recognize this. Now, with this incident, the whole world, the whole world saw how these TPL supporters, how they are coming up. Sometimes the military leaders, that means Islamic military leaders, military, no ISIS, no Taliban, this is the best group now. Mm. Because they openly, they have done and shown, and finally, you know what they do, they worship for the goal. This is not the incident. But as perfectly said, uh, this will go under the carpet for some time. First few weeks, that's the Asian culture. And also the case can drag for years and years. And the appeal also there, please don't forget, you can go on appeal and appealing. But we have to see the way forward. Where we start, we are, we stop this. But I don't think even right to education will be given by this uh, mm. uh, revolutionary military group. So the system must come from them. We too can talk a lot here. But we are not living in Pakistan. The reality is that, my, you have to understand how to change the system with them. Because this is where there are much fear and there is no reasonable criticism, nothing. Even... I have seen in Canada and other papers, sometimes this type of extremism ha spread. What happened in France? Yes. Many of the world, they think this is where Turkey and most of the countries. So we, we, we have a great threat. I think the council also met today, the defense uh, council. So they will discuss these matters. And the root cause where they start slowly with this madrusa. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, slowly they spread and brainwash like LTT and slightly giving the weapon. Now, the weapon is not this. This is cyber weapon will, uh, will come very soon. Thereafter, grab the political power and then the state of Islam. So this is where the worship is going on. 
So likewise, I don't think even capital but, punishment given but, for this person, this may not end. But Pakistan is a state of Islam, uh, uh, Islamic state. Yeah, yeah. So what exactly, what more do they, are, are they asking for? What exact, I mean, like, it's not as if this country is not uh, recognizing Islam as, as the, the main religion in that particular country. Uh, I think breaking away from, in history, from India uh, is because they want to have a, a separate Muslim state. Now, they've got that already. Now, what are, the, what are these TPL guys are asking more that could be, that, that they're not okay with the, the current way of Muslim, uh, living? Right. Now, this is where we have to see their next step. Now, this can come in Bangladesh, I don't know. <laughs> Certain cities, it cannot be all. As Honorable Minister said, a lot of Sri Lankans are working. I was there for three years in Jamaica, but nothing happened to me. They were very friendly because this time of extremism, not in Caribbean countries. But if you go for other countries, even I, I, I know United Arab Emirates, these things may not come. But, but this, this is a good signal, alarm for the regional security to cover up and see what their next element. So very closely the intelligence services must look their activities. Now they are boosted and morally they are fit now TPL. We have shown the whole world. Now what is the next stage? My reading next stage is to grab the power, political power. So they may not go with uh, military power because uh, military is very powerful in Pakistan. Okay, mm -hmm. any time. Nawaz period also, we have seen honorable Nawaz, how they got the power. Mm. So they may strategically, methodologically, they go in a different way. All right, we'll get the power democratic way. And thereafter, what they do, they want to spread this for Asia. That is their fundamental argument. <laughs> Foreign Minister, uh Honestly, in your opinion, now if, if by any chance if something, even if a Sri Lankan goes near an American and farts here in Colombo, the uh, American embassy in Colombo will start putting uh, travel advisories and doing lots of things in order to say there is some kind of threat here, even though we all know there isn't. We don't see that happening from our foreign service. Uh, we didn't, don't even know what the steps they've taken in order to ensure those other remaining Sri Lankans in those particular areas are they safe? I have you all accounted them for? I have you all spoken to these people? Is there a, is there a helpline that these people can talk in case if they're in trouble? That kind of a you know um, a, a, a strong response is required because these people are foreign income earners. They 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 are pretty much helping our economy here in in Sri Lanka. What is your opinion? You think? Are you satisfied with uh, all the, the, the foreign uh, uh, relations that, that, that has occurred since this incident and, and the diplomatic uh, uh, circle that it has, you know, started turning into? Are you, are you satisfied with it? So in my, in my opinion, it's a matter for the ones in office to handle it to the best of the country's interest. In order to do that, we have very good systems in place built into our foreign service to the foreign ministry. Now it's a matter of initiating action. Now you have the switch, unless you put the switch on, you will not have the lights here. So the switches are there in place, but you have to find how when they are going to light it, and then you get, throw some access to the location that concerns. If you look at the statistics, virtually doctor, we have about 20% uh, of our working population is working abroad. Mm -hmm. 20% is about 1.4 million, the time I was foreign minister. Uh, 1.4 million Sri Lankans are abroad. Out of working population of about 8 million in Sri Lankan standards. So it's a sizable number. Now everyone has, a, has the belief, once they are abroad, their interests are getting looked after by the government to be, or by the country to which they belong to. That's why we give them Sri Lankan passports. We have consular services, we have welfare schemes, we have insurance schemes to protect their interests and see that they have their access to uh, whatever the monetary considerations, all those things. But now this is a good time to activate to the highest level because not only for the one who died in vain, but for the, who, the ones who are living. Similar occurrences may take place in the other locations as well. We can't stop extremism even including Sri Lanka occurring. So that how can we stop that happening in the other locations, which are more vulnerable sometimes due to religious uh, so-called inclinations. And the other area of concern that I have in particular for Pakistan, in a, such a country that has nuclear power, mm -hmm. that has the best of militaries, 
that is enforcing the law uh, to the extent of everyone gets fairly well intelligently I think monitored and they have border situations on one hand with India on the other hand with China then they have the uh, the, the the borders with Afghanistan so likewise and they they are leaders themselves have paid the price of life been taken away from them been sort of Bhutto, terrorism you name it every type of so-called uh, extremist uh, situations had been there, unfortunate situations. So in that context, how are we going to protect our people in that location? Now, if you really see what Silkot is about, one of the best yarn producing textile we mean manufacturing locations in the whole world, most expensive location. So in that context, the industrialists are there, investors are there. They are the ones who stepped in and tried to compensate uh, the loss of uh, this, uh, the, the Kumara. But what are we doing now, mm. the way forward? That is why I say continuous presence must be engaged on the investigation. Because from a regional context, doctor used a very uh, important uh, phrase here, regional security. If it gets out of hand there, we are the victims. We are a small nation, we are an island nation. We have suffered with extremism, separatism, and terrorism. So this becomes a very fast breeding ground. And unless we want our shows, want our presence, want our intelligence well, collect information, others anything can strike here as well. And now these are test run because if they can dominate this group, TLP, uh, in Pakistan politics, now Lahu is one of the most richest states, the federal states, four states they have, Lahu is one area, they come, that is Punjab state of Pakistan. Uh, the capital is Lahu. This is only 100 kilometers from, uh, from, uh, from the capital of Punjab. So, Lahu. Now, Lahu is one of the most famous locations in the whole world at one time, during the time of the British. One part is now gone to India. The Punjab state uh, is also having uh, on the other side. But having said that, now this separation that came with the independence of Pakistan from the Indian soil and it is again a developed area. Now this is not a very primitive area but people yeah. are virtually endorsing the killing in the brutal mm -hmm. manner in which this killing took place in thousands. So that shows public response is not negative. It's, it is the most, the most alarming situation here. In the event public resisted and the law enforcement arm stepped in this couldn't have happened this way. Why are these 200, 300 getting arrested today? What is the crime? Perpetuated by 300 with common uh, intention, common interest, collectively? So how do you explain this? It can happen next year, tomorrow. Exactly. It can continue to happen. And in, they know that the numbers in their hands, numbers in their favor, that means this is only breeding more and more situations of this nature. That is something as a country, we have to work with Pakistan at the highest level, not say that, okay, if you a statement, thank you for the investigation, not enough. We have to be totally involved. <laughs> in fact, when we had them, uh, you will remember that ACF issue in that, uh, uh, where the, in Trincomalee, that the volunteers in a foreign uh, NGO got killed. Sure. Continuous, the foreign minister of Pakistan, uh, France, uh, Bernard Krishne, was calling me every week for investigation reports to share with them. And they expressed their dismay sometimes for our slow progress at times. That is a concern for their people, for their organizations. So here is something that we have to really come forward and act fast. True. Uh, foreign Minister, uh, former Foreign Minister Ruth Bubalagame, and also uh, the Director of the Shri Pali Campus uh, of the University of Colombo, Dr. Pratibha Mahanami. I'm in conversation with them. Let's take a short commercial break. You're watching um, the special presentation of Gertriel on the rise of extremism in South Asia. We'll be back.
Sri Lankan conversation with former Foreign Minister Ruth Bubulagame and also the Rector of the Sri Pali Campus uh, at the University of Colombo, Dr. Fedua Mahana Meheva. We've been talking about the rise of uh, extremism in South Asia. Uh, I, I turn to you, Doctor, um, and ask you um, to wrap up this entire discussion. What do you think? Uh, you touched on one very important aspect, that this cannot be just tackled with one single nation. The entire region needs to come together, and they need to come together fast. Um, India, Pakistan, the SARC region, I think this is a good uh, uh, thing to talk about uh, in the SARC and to activate the SARC to make it work for the people in the region. Uh, what do you think, what kind of, uh, will we see another, another Afghanistan-like uh, uh, scenario in Pakistan? I don't think uh, up to that level Pakistan will continue. But Honorable Minister said a very good uh, point. That is where continuous pressure must be given. Continuously, the High Commissioner should visit every court case, sit down and see how we can take the justice to the innocent family members. Because they went to earn money, not only for the family, but for the country also. So continuous dialogue we need. And also, there are certain recommendations I have seen in this. Number one, intelligence. And the law enforcement. Even a foreigner, you can't keep away your eye. You must give the highest. Embassy, the immunity is there. Minister knows very well. So those things are there for us. Even uh, they tried to sue Honorable Mahindra Rajabaksh at that time in USA also. But finally, it was also thrown away. But my argument is we are this starting with teaching. So monitor Madrusa or Arabic schools. They can teach, they can learn. Holy Al-Quran, that's all right. But under that, there are certain versions are happening. And also, this is What's a good the point. reason for that? I always try to figure out, okay, the, you, you're talking about, uh, and, and everybody's, I have not studied uh, Islam, but you, but you have. Uh, me being a Christian, trying to understand this, this other religion is, I always re try to figure out, okay, you're talking about peace, you're talking about humanity, you're talking about, uh, in, in this side, what's the need for armed conflict? What's the need to keep, you know, suppressing people, get them yeah. to do this, you know, how, it, it does not tally. One objective, to get the world power, to make all the countries under their domination. This is the single point the, of view. The, the uh, domination of those political yeah, parties or, or the religion? Religion and the region. Mughal, the most powerful emperor Mughal at that time, please study. They want to go back to that system. So to wrap up what I want to say, follow all these Arabic teaching schools, not only in uh, Pakistan, but the whole region, specifically Sri Lanka. And number two, intelligence. They must properly follow who are behind this. But the majority are with TPL now. Yes. So they were recognized. So from them only, you have to get all this. Otherwise, I don't think it's very easy to give a solution at this moment. Thank you. Uh, from, uh, Minister, Sri Lanka continues to say, uh, the Sri Lankan High Commissioner there in Pakistan says, you know, this entire incident has not dented relations of, of, of the countries. So I can understand that, uh, you know, we have to continuously engage because they're part of the region. They're not, not a foreign national that is millions of miles away. Um, but how do you see if we are proceeding uh, with foreign relations, the Pakistan uh, ambassador is here in Sri Lanka. We have a, a, a talking point here as well. So how do you see moving forward from this particular point, learning from this incident and, and, and re-engaging with the region to say that there is a threat emerging and we got to do something about it? I take it, Mahesh, uh, what is important here, this should be a lesson that we have learned comprehensively. Why I say this, the government of Sri Lanka should not take it lightly. Not one individual who has got killed 